Well, we've been zooming in on Asia's number one economy this week as it prepares to mark the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. So far, we've talked about the country's inland cities, appetite for travel, and the growth of the Greater Bay Area. Well, tonight, the focus is on China's artificial intelligence ambitions. Well, seven years ago, Beijing authorities unveiled a plan to establish their nation as a global leader in AI by 2030. CNA's Tan Yuguan looks at the progress. Imagine a world where pretty much anyone can create a short drama video like this without leaving their desks. One Chinese tech company is already beta testing an AI platform that could make that a reality. China's gaming industry is one sector that's been using AI generative content or AIGC to make better games. China's recent gaming hit, Black Myth Wukong, is an example of a game that uses AI and machine learning to enhance the behaviours of non-playable characters. But content is just one aspect of AI that China has been making inroads. China is now also leading in autonomous vehicles as well as facial recognition. And industry insiders say China has the preconditions to develop and excel in even more AI applications. China Chinese人善于把技术给他产品化，那么我认为在产品化上，中国人可能会走得更远一些。中国拥有全世界最庞大的AI工程师队伍，中国每年毕业的大学生在STEAM专业方面是三百七十万人，而美国只有八十万人。
engineering 就像原来的打字用键盘打字一样，会是将来所有行业的一个基本技能。如果你能早一点掌握这个 prompt engineering， 那么你在 AI 时代就能取得呃更大的优势。在你的日常生活当中，当你接触到一个新的 AI 产品，尽量大胆的去尝试和使用，并且把它引入在你的工作、生活和任何领域。That's perhaps good advice, not just for recent graduates in China, but for everyone in the labor market all across the world. After all, with the world's two largest economies racing to innovate in AI, it's not a question of if, but a question of when AI might make an impact on you, if it hasn't already done so. Tan Yu Guan, CNA, Shanghai. To find out more about how China is progressing in its AI ambitions, we are joined by Patrick Liu, a researcher with Roland Berger Strategy Consultants, and he's speaking to us from Shanghai. Well, warm welcome to uh, East Asia tonight, uh, Patrick. So we heard uh, from my colleague Yuan's story a little earlier about the brain drain of top talent uh, to the US uh, and, and other Western nations. I'm wondering, Patrick, to what extent do you think this actually impacts um, China's plan to become a global leader in AI um, in six years' time? Well, thanks for having me here. Um, I think if we talk about China, um, I think there are many advantages that China possess in terms of uh, developing artificial intelligence industry,、uh, especially at the current moment. We are primarily talk about the generative AI.、Um, Uh, but I think the most prominent one among those advantages would the would be the wide and diversified application scenarios that China possess,、uh, thanks to the sophisticated and comprehensive industrial sectors and the huge consumer market that China possess. Um, I think there are three things good about having such a wide and rich application scenarios. One is about the data resources they have. I think, according to、um, some statistics,、uh, I think there are 34 zettabytes、uh, that、uh, the data generated in China, like each year. That's probably about like 90 billion gigabytes per day. I think with such a huge amount of data resources, it can be fed into the algorithm, which make the algorithm more precise and accurate, and which make the product experience much better.、Uh, the second thing about having such a huge application scenario is the market potential for commercialization.、Um, due to the reason that we have such a huge market in the、uh, B two B sector. As well as the consumer sector,、uh, for different country, for different companies to generate their business model and to evolve their business model、uh, in order to cope with the market demands、uh, uh, as as the product and the technology evolve. And I think the number three about about, about this is that、um, it is better to form a positively self-sustaining cycle,、uh, which means like the more data you have, the more precise and accurate would your product would be. Which means it would achieve better、uh, market performance. You would attract more consumers to use your product, which in turn generates more data to feed into your algorithm, and thus which would make a、uh, positive cycle、uh, to push forward the technology as well as the commercialization results、uh, from the products you have. So,、uh, Patrick, to summarize for our viewers out there, the three big advantages that China、uh, have is that they've got data resources, they've got market potential, and also this uh, self-sustaining uh, cycle,、uh, as you have mentioned. But you know, some will, critics will actually say that China still trails、uh, the U.S. in high-end AI research. So, I'm wondering, how can China close this gap? Well, I think in terms of the closing the gap between China and the U.S.,、um, I think there there are some、uh, there are some aspects that China can consider into invest in.、Uh, one is the ecosystem that they can help to build.、Uh, when we mention about the ecosystem, it means like、uh, the developers you have, the talents, the engineers you would possess, as well as the、um, capital that you can invest into such a、um, a, 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 a a industry. I mean, like for the artificial intelligence. Is due a, I mean, especially for the generative AI, it's still a brand new industry,、uh, which means like you still need to have,、uh, you still need to involve different parties、uh, to invest such a, a a new ecosystem in order to close the gap,、uh, as well as the uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, chasing up with the、uh, most advanced countries in the world.
Yeah, we, I mean, we certainly can't deny that China's AI development has made uh, incredible strides. Um, but, you know, what are some of the concerns that come with such, you know, rapid AI adoption? Uh, for instance, reading a recent article, you know, a recent driverless taxi accident in China. I mean, that has sparked discussions on certain limitations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, what are your yeah, concerns? I mean, yeah. it's, it's a I mean, I mean, it's kind of like the natural, like when you have such a new technology. I mean, um, especially like like for any new technologies when they come to the market, uh, there are always such uh, a new faces. Uh, like a bubble or a hype, like uh, during the uh, emergence of the industry, and I, I, I think uh, in order to cope with such a uh, such a situation at the current moment, uh, still we need some policy support from the government side in order to solve like the technological ethical issues, um, as well as to uh, adopt some uh, trial uh, as uh, 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 some some trial zone for such new technologies to develop uh, in some. Uh, pre assumed situations uh, uh and also like we need to uh, we we can take a trial uh we can try we can take a go and a trial uh, approach uh in order to develop such technologies uh which means like uh, we can have some uh, a, a, a specific a specific area uh to uh to let the technology uh to uh to 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 uh, to trial and uh, ensure that uh, every problem can be spotted where it's uh, publicly pushed to the to the mass market. I think. And Patrick, how do you think China's AI strategy aligns with its economic goals? And 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 which are the sectors that actually benefit most uh, from this AI driven innovation? Uh, well, I think in terms of the in terms of the uh, results that can be. Uh, extracted from such a new technology. I think it can be widely uh, used in different sectors. It doesn't matter whether it's in it's on the consumer side or the B2B side. Uh, for example, we have already seen many solid uh, application examples uh, in reality. Uh, for example, if we think about like uh, the knowledge management scenario, um, in the past, like we, need, we in the past when we do knowledge management, we still need to use the research engine. We still need a person uh, manually dedicated to such a task. Uh, but with the adoption of AI technology, we can use an artificial intelligence agent to help us to do the to do the research to collect the information uh, which uh, basically lifts the threshold for us to achieve the information and knowledge we need so such a, a big leap uh, in such the knowledge management field has reduced the cost of time um, as well as the cost of of human resources, uh, which might, which means like the human resources can be used uh, to a more creative and uh, more valuable approaches rather than having them to do the repetitive work. Um, so uh, I think such solid examples have emerged already, uh, which generate business values to the market as well as to uh, the producers of the technology. Oh, it's been great chatting with you. Thanks so very much uh, for your thoughts uh, on this. Patrick Liu from Roland Berger Strategy Consultants.